charge of his A game. Yeah, steady stuff from uh, Belmo. 5-5-7, five, five, his maximum over those two games. That's potentially available if he strikes out from here. Wouldn't bet against it. Now, Nickel just needs a strike. He just needs to get something going. Just a soft 10 again in the pocket, but uh, didn't have the power to shoot that, shoot that temp in away. And he looks slightly disappointed. Well, may, he, he may well do. It was a good shot, one of his best ones, and he was looking for 10. And that 10 just stands there in defiance. Well, as with any sport, and especially as with any repetitive sport, you're going to have injury sights on the body. Tempin bowlers are no different. Shoulders, knees, always a problem. Yeah, he's having trouble with that, that, those tempers. Oh, he's making the spares, but uh, he doesn't look very comfortable at all. He has to deliver, deliver from that left-hand side of the lane and angle his body across. And again, that's not doing his knee, knee a lot of good. Well, I think this is a brave performance from the German. But Jason Belmonte in control so far after seven frames. Yes, and Jason will know that uh, Jens has got some problems. Knows he's not playing his normal game. Belmonte down on one knee for that one. Good effort. As soon, as soon as it left his hand, he was down on one knee on the approach, looking to see the ball right into the one-two put into one-three pocket, and that's exactly where it went. Well, he's another two-handed bowler that claims that he bowls two-handed by accident. It was just a, an accident of fortune that he started bowling very, very young, couldn't throw the ball one-handed, so had to use two, and that's the way it's ended up. But, Cass, you've got a theory that two-handed bowling may become the way of the world. I don't see that many bowlers actually adapt to it. I think it's something that you may have to have learnt, as you say, from a very early age. But having looked, seen... Oski Paloma and now Jason Belmonte win so many tournaments and both make it to the World Champion Masters. You've got to think to yourself, there's something in this two-handed game, isn't there? And while we were talking, Jens rips the rack and hits us with a bit of body language we haven't seen for a while. Low revs and low speed, though. 360 revs on that last ball. That's not uh, anywhere near what you'd expect from the likes of Belmonte. You'd be expecting them to push up towards the 400s, maybe over. Oh, probably over, yeah, 4, 24, 50. Be interesting to see. Looking for another 10, and perhaps that right. <laughs> Once again, no trouble there. You really heard it biting into the boards there as it came through the last phase of its delivery curve. Yeah, he's pacing 250, is Belmont. It's the ninth frame gone. Not Belmo. Barnes and Palermo, the names that spring to mind at the moment from this tournament. All of them posting very, very good scores. Well, what a, what a start to a tournament. The first three matches with those three uh, high rollers. Nickel changes his ball again, I think. Oh, he's, uh, shoots wide. It's tough. He's, he's not sliding the ball onto the lane. He is literally dumping it down about two metres away from him. It's all he can do with his knee injury, but he's going to keep going gonna keep pushing yeah really lofted that one down the line didn't he and of course you're not gonna have the accuracy with that you know you may hit your mark but it's gonna jump sideways and uh, you're not gonna have the consistency you won't be in the right area of the lane when the ball starts to bite and so consequently that's why he's missed the head pin to the right hand side well I can tell you we're just getting some news through from the stats boys about Jason Belmonte's revs on the ball and uh, Quite incredible, Cats. He's averaging around about 525, <laughs> which is really fizzing. <laughs> that is unbelievable. We saw uh, in last year's Weber Cup, Tommy Jones, uh, the PBO professional, came over and just broke 500 on a couple of shots. But if Belmont is averaging 520 plus, that's just unbelievable. And you can see why when his ball goes into the 1 3 pocket, but those pins stand no chance. So it's a very good start from Belmonte to this match. Quarterfinal place awaiting him. He made the quarterfinals in 2006, made the semis back in 2005 to the Australian. Again, difficult to believe, just 23 years of age. It seems like we've been talking about him forever. 
That's a stunning set of results. He's willing to put the miles in. He puts some serious air miles in traveling around the world to play. Not quite up with uh, the Tim Max of this world, but he does his traveling. Yes, he's, he's getting those air miles on his, on his card. Well, he bumped that one a bit. Oh, dumped it down for just a single two pin. Potential 246 if he spares this one. But just no pressure from his opponent, uh, Nickel, who's on for a 192 if he can strike from here. So, I mean, is there a chance that Belmo and uh, Oscar could actually meet in this tournament? Well, I mean, what a match that would be. Well, Oscar's got a heck of a heck of a challenge in the uh, quarterfinals up against PBA star Chris Barnes, defending champion, but on the form that he displayed in his first round match against Sky Kaminsky, it's possible. And if he gets through that one and Jason Belmonte comes through his quarterfinal tie, then it could be a double-handed semi-final. Well, I've just had some stats, actually, about Oscar Paloma's rev rate, and uh, he actually broke the 600 mark on one of his shots in his game. And these stats uh, about the volleyball rev revolutions comes from the little monitors you can see on the side of the uh, lane on the approach. It's the computer-aided tracking system, or CATS for short. Picks up details of the bowling ball, where it's placed on the lane, the speed it's going at, and more importantly, and interestingly, the amount of rotation or revolutions on the ball as it passes those four points on the lane. Well, Belmonte and Palermo have certainly made cats per at this tournament so far. <laughs> it's a very uh, interesting piece of hardware and software. It's a great coaching aid for lots of bowlers around the world and uh, gives us some extra stats to uh, talk about on TV here. Well, Jens battling away with that injured leg. You can see planting it straight down, no slide. And he's finally found some range, so he doubles up. Trying to get a strike all the way through here to record 192 if he can. I uh, wouldn't exactly say that's pressure on Belmonte, but at least he's still in the game. Oh, yes, indeed. Um, well, we were worrying about uh, Jens's knee causing him a problem, but uh, he's made 190 under duress. And, uh, well, it's just a matter of seeing whether he can hang in there for the second game. As I'm sure Bel Belmonte will. Shoots three strikes in a row in the tenth round and finishes in grand style. The form that uh, we're used to seeing from Jens Nicker. So well, he'll take that. It's been a tough first game for the smiling assassin. But it's Jason Belmonte with a cracking score of 2 4 6 in that opening game that leads Jens Nicker of Germany comfortably. So Jason Belmonte has secured a comfortable score as Jens Nichols faces a tough game. Join us after the break for more. This is the PartyPoker.net World 10 Pin Masters. Now after the first game, Jason Belmonte is looking comfortable, but Jens Nichols is getting frustrated as he struggles with a knee injury. Let's head back over to the match with our commentary team. Jens Nichols then. He's got a fight on his hands, not only against uh, his opponent, Jason Belmonte, but against uh, this knee problem that he's been suffering with. Didn't have a leg to stand on for most of that first game, but came back strongly at the end. And recorded three strikes in a row. Can he keep that form going? It's his only chance against Belmonte to try and put some pressure onto the Australian. Yeah, that familiar pop as the thumb releases from the ball. That just shows you there's a bit more confidence in the delivery of Nick Out. Yeah, it was unfortunate to leave the 7-10 standing, but uh, fortunate soon afterwards to see them both fall over. So he's going to claim that strike. Unfortunately, he's not had too many in this match, whereas Belmonte has strung four in a row.